in the event sequence section here, you'll notice a number of predefined events or sequences in here. Number one is set up as none. So if you're going to manually enter each race distance as the as the meet progresses, you would choose this. Um, we have the boys high school, girls high school, boys girls, so on and so forth. The NC two A thirteen fifteen. 15 and 16 event programs and then 8 and 9 are set up as user defined so I could potentially go into 8 or 9 or any one of these I can actually overwrite or edit or change around how I want to do it uh, how the how the sequence is set up um, however since a vast majority of, of facilities use some sort of a meet manager program like high tech uh, we can actually dump the event sequence that's predefined in Meet Manager over into the System 6 and use that so that every time we hit a next event or next or, you know, the next event key on the System 6, it goes in and it looks up and it sees what the next race distance is and whether it's a boys or girls, that sort of thing. So now while the most common is to store those particular races in either 8 or 9, like I said, they can actually be written into any one of these slots. Um, and I can also go in with this number zero. I can highlight a particular one, like this case, the one that's red, the boys' high school, and I can go in and view and edit that sequence if you want. Uh, the manual has a, has a good section on how to actually go in and edit or end or set up one from the keyboard. Like I say, though, since the vast majority run one through Meet Manager and just dump it over into the System 6, that's what we're going to go over here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to shift over here and let me get up pull meet manager up and we will uh, start that here so that we can see how all this works alright so on the meet manager side of things what I need to do is I need to actually uh, go in here and set up what COM port I'm going to talk to the system 6 now keep in mind your serial cable needs to be plugged into your system 6 on the COM 1 port of the back back of the timer so I've got a USB to serial adapter which is very common nowadays so I'm gonna go into control panel this happens to be Windows 7 so I can go to control panel and go to device manager and then as device manager slowly boots up here I can come down to ports and I can figure out find that my USB to serial port adapter is on COM 8 so I can close out of there close out of control panel let's go back to meet manager and in the run menu I need to go to interfaces and go to timer and open and close serial port so that number eight is what is the COM port that I'm talking out of my laptop to the system six on so I need to put in eight and I need to press OK and you'll notice that I get the communications passed so I can click OK so at this point we are talking to the system 6 now as you may recall I left the system 6 sitting in the setup screen so if I go back in here and I tell it to download an event to the CTS 6 it brings me up this grid that allows me to, to choose where I want to set it at or send it to so in this case number 8 if I click OK it will give me a warning message to please take the timer out of the setup screen so and then it will also tell me that the download did not complete so in this case I'm gonna go over back over to my six and I'm gonna quit out of there I'm gonna come back into interfaces timer download events to system CTS 6 choose user to find slot 8 and I'm gonna click OK and it's done you now I have a very I don't know how big of a meet I have set up here but it is all set it has all been transferred over at this point so now back on the system 6 if I go back into the setups and notice that under the event sequence that there now shows instead of being user defined under number eight it shows a demo meet so that's the one I downloaded from meet manager into the system six and it's already chosen it's showing up in red at this point it's ready to go um, if I if I needed to choose any other event I just literally enter that number on the 10 keypad uh, and work and it'll be uh, it'll be set to actually r start running this meet I would need to hit quit on to the right of the screen and then I would need to hit the edit event sequence button and I'd go to event one heat one and there you see the first event of the of the event sequence I sent over was the hundred girls freestyle final so go back into setups here real quick that's 
basically all there is to it. If you have communications issues, keep in mind it's usually related to the COM port that you're assigning or that Windows assigns on the laptop that you're running Meet Manager on. Bear in mind that the USB to serial adapters, uh, when I plug it into one particular USB port, Windows assigns a certain number, like in our case it assigned COM8. If I switch that over to another one of my available USB ports on that laptop, Windows is going to assign a different COM number. So it's always good check to go back into Device Manager uh, via control panel in your Windows laptop and see what COM port got a Windows assigned to that, that adapter to make sure that you uh, have no issues. That wraps up the event sequence. The last two on here, set date and time, are fairly straightforward. Setting time of day, setting the date, and whether or not you want number three, whether you want it to show up as a 12 hour or 24 hour clock. The only real caveat to this all is under set the time. You need to enter it in, 20, in a 24 hours uh, style, so, uh, and it needs to have minutes and seconds entered is the only key and you use this through the 10 keypad down at the bottom and hit enter when you're done. Uh, the date is very straightforward starting with and it's, it's a little uh, can be a little strange to when you start entering it. Uh, if I do this and you're just doing a two digit year you start with the month, the day, the year and you hit enter. On the wireless side of the setups, this pertains only if you have a two SkyFi, two of our SkyFi adapters uh, to run scoreboard data wirelessly from the six up to your numeric scoreboard. Uh, what this allows you to do in the System Six is actually do some changes to the adapter. Let's say you're getting interference or what it, what have you and you wanted to change the channels. Uh, you can do that via 3 and 4. The thing that you want to do first though is you want to make absolutely certain you change the receiver channel first and then the transmitter channel. Uh, otherwise you won't be able to if you change the transmitter first you won't be able to change the receiver channel without physically going up and changing the dip switches that are on the SkyFi and if you have questions or concerns about that look through the SkyFi manual it actually tells you how that works uh, as far as the dip switches go to set the the channel but keep in mind that anything I send it any command I send it to change the channel via the system 6 that overrides whatever those dip switch settings are and it will retain those if you power them down and power them back up so uh, one and two allow us to put the wireless channel up on the scoreboard so that just for whatever reason you want to make sure that you've got the right channel and number two allows us to show what the wireless firmware version is if say later down the road we had we released a firmware upgrade for the SkyFi's you could you could verify that through here to see what version you actually have on your SkyFi so this is literally the uh, end of the setups and at this point we're going to go in and we're going to start talking about how to set up for a meet uh, with the hardware and actually run kind of a simulated meet uh, and, and things to look for on the uh, with the System 6 in that regard.